most appropriate that the first person to speak this evening is related to both John McBride and his wife, Maud Gone. John and his brother, Joseph, married two half-sisters, Maud Gone and Eileen, respectively. Our speaker tonight, Mary McBride Walsh, is the granddaughter of Eileen and Joseph McBride, and she will now speak on, the ha on behalf of the McBride family. Mary. <laughs> Good evening everybody, you're all very welcome on this glorious evening. I would like to welcome Reverend Fathers, County Manager Peter Hines, councillors, ladies and gentlemen, McBride, relatives, my husband Seamus and close friends. Uh, it is a wonderful honour to be asked to represent and speak on the McBride family this evening. I wish to thank Austin Vaughan and Mayo County Council for putting on this superb 1916 centenary exhibition. I wish to thank Westport Historical Society for supporting this exhibition and for organising many of the events this week. Before I go any further, I'd like to give a cave me la to my cousin Patrick McBride, a grand nephew of Major John and Dr. Anthony McBride, grandson of Dr. Anthony. Patrick flew from America this morning in Dublin at 5 a.m. He was also present for all the ceremonies at uh, Easter week in Dublin. Kate me le falsche, Patrick. <laughs> it's incredible to think that 100 years ago today, that Honoria Gill McBride lived less than 20 metres from here where the Helen is. She received the news of her son's execution from an 11 year old boy, um, oh, um, Tommy Heavey, thank you. <laughs> to, uh, yes, uh, Vincent, this was a wonderful little tip that you had in the mail news this week. Tommy Heavey happened to be in Joyce's news agent on Shop Street, which is McLaughlin's today, and he saw headlines of a pa on the paper of Major John's execution. He was dispatched to run out here to the quay and give Honoria McBride the sad news of her son's execu execution. She bowed her head and went inside. Three days um, late, uh, her, yeah, that was 20 metres from here. Just before he was shot, he asked the Capuchin father, Augustine, to give his coins to the poor and to his rosary beads to his mother in Westport. Next Sunday will be all about the Westport men caught up in this conflict. Tonight, I think we should think of the women affected by the rising. How many wives became widows overnight and families losing their father and brother? These women had the responsibility of rearing these young families alone. These mothers were left heartbroken by their sons were sent to jail and husbands also. What went through Honoria Gill McBride's mind when three days later her eldest son Joseph, my grandfather, was arrested out in Mallow Cottage, the family home, and sent to Dublin and then to Frongook Jail for months on end. Their sacrifice and the sacrifices of many have given us our freedom today and this should be valued and protected and the ideals of the proclamation should be cherished. Arish J. Gorawa Hanam Yilish. Thank you. 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 Thank you.